Okay, everybody, my name is Blake. I'm from the University of Kentucky Department of Entomology, and um, I work with 4-H Entomology. So we're not able to come to State Fair this year, so we're gonna show you guys some stuff right here on these videos. Um, so uh, a couple of things I wanna talk about is first our 4-H Entomology projects for State Fair. So something that, that youth can do is create an insect project. One of the options that they can do is to create a pinned insect project where they actually catch insects, pin them, and identify them, put them in a box like this, and submit them to County Fair. So that's one option. Another option is to create a photography version of this, where the kids go out with a cell phone or a digital camera and do the same thing. They go out and find different insects, um, take pictures of them, identify them, and then assemble them as a series of digital images that they put on a USB drive. So there's two different ways to participate in County and State Fair. But what we're going to do next is talk about some real live insects and their relatives. Um, some of these things are found in Kentucky and some of these are found in other parts of the world. Um, some of these are insects and some of them are kind of like insects but not quite and we'll talk about that. So entomology is a subject that 4-Hers can study in Kentucky. Um, like we said, they can do those projects but um, there's also some um, guidebooks and other resources that you can find at um, both the 4-H website and the University of Kentucky website to get uh, youth started on studying insects in Kentucky and the rest of the world. So let's get started here with some of these creatures. I'm going to start out with something that is not an insect. And we'll explain why that is here in a second. So insects are part of a big group of creatures called arthropods. It's a huge group of animals in the world. Um, they have a few things in common. They have an exoskeleton. In other words, their skeleton is on the outside of their body. They don't have any kind of internal bones at all, just juices and organs inside their bodies. And then the other thing that all arthropods have in common is that they have jointed legs, almost like robot legs, and jointed body segments. So this creature is an arthropod, but it's not an insect, and we'll show you why. And this creature is really cool. This is a millipede. This is a desert millipede from the western part of the United States. It's one of the biggest millipedes in our parts of the world, although in other parts of the world, millipedes can get about a foot long and as big around as a garden hose. So some millipedes can be really, really big. The way that we know that this is an arthropod, like I said, is that it has a segmented body with an exoskeleton and it has lots of little jointed legs, but it has too many legs to be an insect. An insect is always gonna have six legs. This creature has about, mm, not quite sure, maybe about 200 legs. That's way more than an insect has. So this creature is a millipede. Millipedes do live here in Kentucky, and we have one that's almost this big in the forests. Um, it's not quite as long as this, but it's actually a little bit bigger around than this. So you can find some pretty large millipedes here if you go looking for them. Um, millipedes are harmless creatures to humans. So millipedes can be picked up and looked at um, they won't bite you. They will sometimes squirt a little bit of a fluid on your body that smells weird and can turn your skin a little bit purple. So that might be a little bit strange, but as long as you don't lick it, you'll probably be okay. Um, another thing that's interesting about millipedes is that uh, you guys probably know what a centipede is. So a centipede and a millipede have a little bit in common. They're both long, they're both arthropods, and they both have a lot of legs. But the big difference is their behavior or their biology. A millipede is a slow-moving creature that eats plants and things like mushrooms and old dead leaves. So they're very, very slow and they're not venomous. Centipede, on the other hand, also very long and narrow like a millipede, but a centipede is a predator. Centipedes are out hunting other creatures, so they are fast. Um, they will quickly move away from you if you see one of them, whereas the millipede's very slow. And centipedes could possibly bite you. The ones that we have in the United States, luckily, are not very dangerous. But just like millipedes, there are centipedes in the world that are about a foot long and about as big around as a garden hose. And those sometimes send people to the hospital. So lots of really cool things going on in the world of millipedes and centipedes. But we certainly encourage you to go out and look for millipedes in, um, in your yard and in the forest in Kentucky because they're really neat to look at and observe. So we'll put her back and we'll set these back over here. And now we'll look at something else that is not an insect. So this creature does live in Kentucky. This, part, this creature lives in the southeastern part of the state. 
down between around Somerset, all the way east to places like Pikeville, and then all that southeastern part of the state down there. And this is um, the only kind of scorpion that lives in Kentucky. It's only about an inch and a half long. It's a real scorpion. It has pinchers on the front of its body and a long tail with a stinger on the back. We know that it's an arthropod once again because it has jointed legs and a segmented body, but it's not an insect. It's got eight legs instead of six. Some of you all may know what the eight-legged arthropods are called. Those are the arachnids. So this creature is an arachnid. It belongs to the same group as spiders and mites and ticks. And like I said, this is the only example of a scorpion that we have in our state. Um, it does have a venomous stinger on the end of its tail, but the species that we have, this one in Kentucky, is not very dangerous. If it stings you, it hurts for a little while, but that's it. There are scorpions in other parts of the world that can get to be quite a bit bigger than this, and some of both the big ones and the small ones that live in other parts of the world can be pretty dangerous. They can send people to the hospital. This one, though, luckily, is not too dangerous. Um, scorpions do a few things that are really interesting. Um, this one is found under rocks and logs in the southeastern part of the state. One thing that's really cool about scorpions is that they glow if you have a black light. So a black light is um, another word for an ultraviolet light. And you can buy them as flashlights, and they look purple. And if you shine them on a scorpion, their body glows kind of a whitish, bluish, sort of purple color. Um, it's really amazing. As far as we know, it works on all scorpions, including this one. And if you're really brave and have some adults that want to help you out, you can go on a scorpion hunt at night in the summertime. Take your UV light, go out on trails at nighttime in the southeastern part of the state. Scorpions hide during the day, but come out at night. You can find them with your UV light best thing is probably just to observe them instead of trying to catch them or touch them. But um, even if you do accidentally touch one, it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit painful. But they're really cool to see and actually extremely common in some parts of the state. These guys are little predators. They eat stuff like um, termites and ants and little worms and things like that. So we'll put this one away. And just very quickly, we'll look at an example of another kind of scorpion. This one is not from Kentucky. This one is from the southeast part of Asia, and it's called the forest scorpion. This one is actually quite a bit larger than ours. This one is also not particularly dangerous, even though it's big. This one is also not as um, sort of gentle and calm as our species. Uh, but if I were to get stung by this, it would definitely hurt, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it, but... It wouldn't send me to the hospital or anything like that. So like I said, there are other kinds of scorpions in the world, including a yellow one that's about as big as the one we just saw from Kentucky that lives in the southwestern part of the U.S. That one is pretty dangerous, but this one is not. Otherwise, this one does the same thing that our scorpion does. It has pinchers on the front, it has a stinger on the back, and it just goes around and hunts little creatures. This one would eat things like um, roaches, large worms. Uh, it might even be able to catch something like a little mouse or a little snake to eat. So that's the forest scorpion, really cool creature. And now a couple of other things that are not insects. We will look at two very interesting spiders next. Um, we have in Kentucky about 500 species of spiders. We actually might have more than that. We're really not sure. Um, but most of the spiders that we have in our state are not very dangerous. A lot of people are scared of spiders, but most of them have a bite that is either um, too small to bite you or just simply not very dangerous. It would cause something that feels a little bit like a bee sting. But we do have two species of spiders in our state that are considered medically significant. They're a little bit more dangerous than the others. Um, and it's good to be aware of what they are. We'll show these um, right here. Our first one is our black widow spider. Now this creature is very common in Kentucky. Um, we find it under rocks and logs in lots of different habitats. Uh, they're actually really common in places like um, grasslands, farmlands, places that are sort of open with a lot of grass and shrubs and rocks for them to hide. They can also just be around yards. So it's a good creature to be sort of aware of and be careful of. Um, they, are just, they just make a small web that's about as big as a grapefruit. And once they make their web, they don't move around a lot. 
including uh, if you actually, if you happen to find one and turn over a rock and see it, it's actually not going to move very much. It'll usually just stay there. These spiders can't really run, especially if they're not off their web, and they certainly won't ever chase anybody. But they do have a very potent bite. A bite of a black widow spider actually has a nerve toxin in it. So it causes your body's nerves to have problems, causing pain, maybe even problems breathing and stuff like that. It's a very serious bite, usually not lethal, usually, but still very serious. If somebody gets bitten by this, they need to get medical attention right away. The good news about them, though, is like I said, they're not going to chase anybody. They're not going to bite you on purpose. They would only bite you if you accidentally grabbed them or pressed into them or something like that. Um, they, they do seem to be very common around here, though. We find them um, in playgrounds, under rocks and things. Um, so it's, it's a very important creature to be aware of. So that's our black widow. It's a very easy spider to identify. It's the only spider in our state that's shiny, glossy black, almost like painted black metal. So it makes it very easy to identify. Um, a lot of people will, will talk to you about how black widows always have this red hourglass on their body. They usually have that, but sometimes it's not easy to see because it's on the underside of their body. Um, so a lot of times you don't see that. A lot of times you just see a black spider. So we, we advise people, if you see a shiny black spider, it's probably a black widow, so just stay away from it. And they actually don't always have that hourglass anyway. So that's our black widow. And then we also have um, a spider that's of uh, also of medical significance, but it's very misunderstood. This is our brown recluse spider. Brown recluse is not as common all over the state as black widow is. It's more common west of I-75, so sort of in the western part of the state. Once you get out there, it's actually pretty common. Um, you hear a lot of things on the internet about how brown recluse cause these horrible wounds and maybe uh, uh, that causes flesh to rot and stuff like that. Um, we know that the bite of them is, is bad. It causes a wound that takes a while to heal. But typically, a bite from these is usually not all that bad. The problem is that sometimes it gets infected afterwards. So if, you get, if somebody gets bitten by one of these, if a doctor takes a look at it, keeps their eye on infection, it tends to not be that bad. But it can still be a serious bite, so we want to take it, we want to take it seriously. But this is the brown recluse. Brown recluse is not as easy to identify as the black widow. Black widow, shiny, glossy black. These guys are just kind of grayish, brownish tan. Uh, so they don't have anything very specific about them to help you identify them. They do have a marking on the top of their, of their head that sort of looks a little bit like a violin or a guitar, but you have to get really close to them to see that, so that's not always very helpful. Um, they kind, of kind of hold themselves flat, and they, um, they tend to hide in, uh, well, they're reclusive. They tend to hide back behind boards and cardboard, and they make a flat web. Um, so those are, the, those are some of the things you would look for with these. Um, we advise people to be careful in places like, especially if they're in Western Kentucky, places like garages, attics, any places that are kind of warm and dry and that have a lot of piled up stuff for these guys to hide in. Once again, just like the Black Widow, these guys are not gonna come looking for you to bite you. They're only gonna bite you if you accidentally press on them or scare them or otherwise make them feel like they're in danger. Both of these guys are full-time predators. So all spiders are predators. They feed on other creatures. These guys are gonna be feeding on things like flies, ants. Um, brown recluse actually feeds on things like roaches and even bed bugs. So some th sometimes even the spiders that we don't like help us out. So we'll put these two away. And we'll see our last creature that is not an insect. And so this creature is one of my favorites. This is a tarantula. So once again, we know that a tarantula is an arthropod because it's got an exoskeleton, no bones on the inside, but sort of a hard covering on the outside. In the case of a spider, that hard covering is also fluffy. It's got hair all over it. So you may not think of it as having an exoskeleton, but it does. Underneath that hair, there's actually almost a plasticky substance that covers its whole body, and that's its exoskeleton. Um, and it also has those jointed legs. And we know that it's not an insect, once again, because it has, an, it has eight legs instead of six. Another thing you'll notice about spiders and scorpions and also mites and ticks is that they don't have antenna. Insects always have antenna. Spiders and the other arachnids don't. But this creature is called the desert blonde. It's one of the tarantulas that lives in the United States. This, from, this one is from places like Arizona, Texas, Mexico, New Mexico. And it just lives in the deserts there. And it's um, not particularly dangerous. There's hundreds of species of tarantulas in the world. None of them have venom that is particularly dangerous to humans. So even though 
Tarantulas can, be, can get very large, and the group of spiders that we call tarantulas includes some of the biggest spiders in the world, including some that are about as big as your both hands stretched out. Even the very big ones with teeth about as big as, the, as, about as, big as a panther claw, their venom is just not very dangerous. So if you get bitten by one of these guys, hurts for a little while, but it's not a big deal. These guys walk around in the desert, um, mostly nocturnal, and they just catch things like grasshoppers, little mice, little snakes, and they eat them. Um, one thing that we advise people against with tarantulas is that uh, tarantulas are often sold in pet stores. And um, once again, their bite is not very dangerous, so that's not a big deal, but you gotta be very careful about their hairs. Their hairs are almost like little tiny pieces of glass, and they can get stuck in your skin or your eyes. A few weeks ago with one of my tarantulas that I take care of, I was actually just removing one of its old skins out of its cage, and uh, my breath caught it a little bit, the wind caught it, and some of those hairs got into my mouth, and I breathed them in, and I had just kind of a, a weird sore throat for like three or four days where I was just going, ah, ah, ah. of course, this is in the time of, of viruses, and so I was, people were wondering, are you infected with something? It was actually tarantula hairs. Luckily, it went away. But if I had breathed that in just a little bit worse, it could have gotten in my lungs, could have been very serious, or could have gotten in my eyes. So if some relative or friend has a pet tarantula, it's a good idea not to pick it up. Just look at it. But this one's called the Desert Blonde. It's kind of a medium-sized tarantula, really common in um, the western U.S. We really like this one because it has very pretty colors. It it's, has sort of this blonde coloration to go with that desert camouflage. Um, a, lot of our, a lot of other tarantulas in the world are going to be more of a, just sort of a, um, an, er, an earthy dark brown or even black or gray colors. So we've seen a few examples of some things that are not quite insects. We saw some millipedes, we saw some arachnids, some spiders and scorpions. Now we're going to take a look at some real insects. So the first one we're going to see is called a darkling beetle. It's also called a mealworm. These creatures are from... Um, tropical regions, but we have some very similar in the United States too. So this is just kind of a shiny black beetle. The ones that live around here will sometimes be found on old decaying logs. And they're pretty interesting because they show an example of the metamorphosis that insects go through. So these guys are, are start out as an egg, a very small egg, and then they hatch into a larva. So just like a butterfly or a moth, they start out as a worm-like creature that crawls around, and these guys eat things like plant roots and apples that fall to the ground. They grow, in this case, pretty large. Then they make a pupa, um, and then that pupa hatches, and a beetle comes out. So this is an example of a creature that totally changes its body. Well, you, you may hear insects referred to uh, as going through a complete metamorphosis. And that's true for beetles and butterflies and a few other kinds of insects. That means their body completely changes. It's almost like they're turning from one species, a worm-like creature, into another species, a hard beetle-like creature. So they really go through an amazing transformation. It would, be as, it would be like if a human were born as a fish, entered a cocoon at some point in their life when they were a teenager, and then came out as a person that lived on land. That's how dramatic some of their, um, their life-changing um, is during that metamorphosis. But these guys are safe to hold. Um, they just walk around and eat stuff like apples and oatmeal. In fact, they live in their food. This is wheat bran. So imagine if you lived inside your favorite food and you just got to crawl around in it and eat it all day long. These guys are known as feeder animals. That means that people will raise these to feed to other kinds of creatures, like people with pet lizards or some kinds of pet fish will raise these and they'll feed the larva um, to their other animals. We just raise them because we like them. Um, they're, they're safe to handle, so when we're um, out in the public, uh, people can hold these and look at them and get a really close look at what beetles and beetle larvae and complete metamorphosis looks like. So those are our darkling beetles. And then our last creature that we'll take a look at here is also an insect. And these guys are some that a lot of people have seen before. These are hissing roaches from Madagascar. So once again, um, we know that this is an arthropod. It's got a segmented body. It's got segmented jointed legs. It's got an exoskeleton. And we know that this is an insect because it has six legs. And these guys, we can actually even turn over and see all six legs. 
These guys live in the forests of Madagascar, and they live inside um, old rotten logs, and they eat uh, fungus and other stuff that's growing inside those rotten logs. They're totally harmless to humans, um, and they're not pests. These guys are related to the pest roaches that sometimes get into our homes and buildings and can even spread diseases around, but luckily these don't do that. These just hang out and relax and they're safe for people to hold. They eat stuff like, um, like I said, in the wild, they're living inside rotten logs, but in captivity, we feed them things like apples and um, romaine lettuce and dry dog food. So those are all of our creatures. Um, hopefully you all will be able to ask some questions and take a look at our website to learn more about 4-H entomology in Kentucky.